Good Friday, everyone here. Todd Houghton here from Houghton Physical Therapy on a Friday. Decided to do Facebook Live number 64 on a Friday, different day of the week. Hopefully we can catch some more people uh, during this episode. So Facebook Live, Todd's tip of the day, number 64 is the top five injuries from doing the wrong core exercises, having poor form, or doing the correct exercises at the wrong time, otherwise known as not your right starting point. In this episode, you're gonna learn if you do the wrong exercises, you do the right ones at the wrong time, or if you have proper form, you will get injured 100% of the time. 100%. Predictable, easy to predict. See it all the time. So again, my name is Todd Houghton here from Houghton Physical Therapy, and I am fascinated with how core activation exercises are crucial to anybody functioning well, whether it's at school, at home, in an activity, at a job, it's a must. I beta test over 15,000 patients using the fuse box theory for about five years now, that core activation is everything, the spine is everything. And I can say a few different things. Success leaves clues. Seeing the pattern of people that don't have the right starting point, that don't use the core activation 100% of the time, they are injured. So what do I consider the core of the fuse box? Anything on the front of the spine, all the way down the abdominal muscles, the pelvis, as well as anything on the back of the spine, the pelvis, the glutes, the adductor muscles. My belief is that 100% of injuries, that's a high number, 100% of upper body injuries are caused from the cervical spine, the inability to stabilize the cervical spine to send enough power and juice all the way down to the plugs otherwise known as shoulders, elbows, and wrist. Cervical spine is also related to a great amount related to lower body injuries as well. I can also say that the lumbar spine, the low back, is responsible for 100% of injuries for hip, knee, and ankle injuries, plantar fascia, IT band, groin, low back, anything. My belief is that all injuries are caused and all injuries are predictable. We just got to do the right stuff at the right time, people. If you invest at the wrong time, you're going to lose. You invest at the right time, you're going to win big. So even doing the right thing at the wrong time is detrimental. So muscles need to be activated, or the muscle groups need to be activated, in my opinion, as the primary movers are the transverse abdominis, the deep abdominal muscles, the glute max, and the adductor muscles. What is the advantage of doing it this way is, number one is the core is turned on, which leads to the spine being stable and all the nerves are open and they're sending the correct signals all the way down to the legs. Especially when the spine is stacked properly, again, with good posture, everything should work well. All the, pl all the plugs and limbs, hips, knees and ankles, how all the juice or power to work, there's no pain and normal sensation. Again, treating the cause is always what we want to do, not treat the symptom. Drives me crazy, my knee hurts, treat the IT band. Stop, stop, stop with the spine all the time. And if you're going somewhere and you're feeling you're not getting better, and they're just treating the symptom, they're treating your Achilles and they're touching your Achilles, and you're not getting better, it's because that's not the it's not the, um, it's the cause of the problem, not the source of the problem. Then we work the secondary muscles, which are low back, glute, medius, tensor fascia lata area, the small hip rotators, and, uh, and some of the low back muscles like the multifides. 99% of people do this, in my opinion, wrong. They work the glute medius first, they work the hip flexor, and they work the hamstring. All muscles that are meant to be backups should be strengthened, but we need to make sure the primary movers are moving first. I see it all the time. My hamstring hurts. I know, you can't fire your glute. Well, no, I'm doing glute exercises and glute bridges. Wrong, right exercise, should say. Right exercise, wrong time. If you can't do a glute set, what are you doing doing a glute bridge? If you can't isolate your glute max muscle separately from your low back, separately from your hamstring, you have no business doing a high level activity. You've got to find your right starting point. What happens when we work the, all the secondary muscles instead of the primary muscles? The primary muscles become disengaged. The adductors become really, really weak. The glute max becomes really weak. And people don't even know how to use the transverse abdominis, never mind breathe. Then we end up leading to compensation, which is not sustainable. Working the wrong muscles all the time is not sustainable. You'll get injured, simple as that. So what are the top five injuries that I see 
because people are not doing the right core activation exercises. Number one, blows it out of the water is low back pain. Low back pain, low back pain can be caused to me by a few different things. The glute medius muscle we talked about, a secondary muscle is overworked and in spasm, sending referred pain to the low back. The next thing is not being able to differentiate the glute max separately, being able to do a glute set separately, and if you can't fire the glutes appropriately, your hamstrings are on fire and turned on, and we've got to shut those babies off. The inability to activate the deep core muscles, the adductor muscles, in the right order, leading to, again, low back pain. Poor form with exercises, and again, right, right good exercises at the wrong time. Low back pain caused by a few things, but it's just imbalances. I should never have to treat and touch someone's low back. When I work everything around the pelvis and activate the right muscles, the rest of the pain should just melt away. Number two, groin pain or groin or pull a groin. Your adductor muscles are your shock absorbers when we're walking, running, landing. Most people say, well, I do the ball exercises. I squeeze the ball. Well, you're squeezing the ball with the wrong form. Try it. If you do ball exercises and you still have knee pain or you still have lateral hip pain, try this. You want to put the ball as close to your groin as you can, and we squeeze the ball just a little bit, almost like you're doing nothing. We're trying to fire the deep adductor muscles. Most people, if you look at your knees, push your knees together. When we're pushing our knees together to squeeze the ball, what are we doing? We are using the lateral hip muscles. We're using the hip abductor muscles. We're using the lateral quad. We're using um, some of the deep, um, we're even using your glutes. We're using your core. We're using everything else but the adductor muscles. So you've got to isolate the adductor muscles. So uh, groin issues are the inability to be able to stabilize the core, the deep core muscles. When we can stabilize the deep core, work the adductor muscles, the groin pain should go away. We shouldn't need to stretch out the groin. The groin is only tight and sore. Now hear me, the groin is only tight and sore because it's out of balance and holding on for dear life. Why would you stretch a tight muscle that's trying to protect you? Stop. Number three, one of my favorites, IT band, no such thing. Drives me crazy. Patellofemoral syndrome drives me crazy. Again, the inability, what is this caused by? The inability to stabilize the core and produce force at the hip. You can't fire your transverse abdominis muscle, you have no hip strength. I can show it on the table, really easy to replicate. Again, the deep core muscles are directly related and responsible for supporting uh, the hip muscles. Also, referred pain from the glute medius. If I do a trigger point release on your glute medius, your lateral knee pain should go away. Your median knee pain should go away. Your inferior knee pain should go away. Glute medius muscle is a backup. When it's in spasm, it's only because you're not working your deep core muscles, you're not working your glute muscles, which should do the primary motion. The glute medius hangs on and becomes your palm muscle, but it's not as strong, it's too small, it can't sustain it. Hence, you get the IT band. Number four is a calf strain or calf pull. Simply, with anything below the knee, my feeling is your engine is not strong enough to, um, the engine is not strong enough for the frame. That's it, you're trying to do too much work with the distal muscles, things that are too distal, and they overwork, they redline, and they get overused, and they hurt, and they pull. So, calf strain or pulls, inability to stabilize the core, just not having a not strong enough engine. You gotta have a strong core to be able to work anything distally. Also, you can get referred pain, so if I do a trigger point release on the glute medius muscle, tensor fascia lata, I should also clear up some of that calf pain. Number five, plantar fasciitis, my favorite. Plantar fasciitis, very interesting. What do most people do? They treat the plantar fascia. They do have plantar fasciitis, and there is a symptom down there, but it's a result of something else, result of some imbalance. In my opinion, the imbalance is we need to work the core, if we work the core, the engine's strong enough, we, we, then we send the impulses for strength for all the little muscles distally as far away from your spine to have enough strength to work efficiently and to work properly. After someone, um, once we can do core stabilizing exercises, then we do hip stabilizing exercises, then we do knee exercises, then we work at the foot. We don't start with balance and stretching out the calves because that's only treating the result of what's going on, not the cause. So if you have plantar fasciitis, if you're not getting better, and you've tried the night splints, you've tried orthotics, you've tried different footwear, and you're not getting better, consider that you need to work your core. And you could tell me you're doing planks, you could tell me you're doing bridges, you could tell me you're doing all these things. You really gotta look at your form and break it down to be honest, are you doing this the correct way? 
So hopefully this was helpful. Um, the top five exercises I see from doing the core exercises not correctly. Um, please feel free to reach out to me at toddhfphysicaltherapy.com. This is one of my most passionate topics because your core is everything. Thanks. See you next time.